Hi there. I realise that the way that I made the spherical camera mount had uh, got a deficiency. So I've made some uh, alteration to it and uh, this uh, little video, or long video, <laughs> is uh, about uh, what I've done and uh, a few clips that I've taken uh, with the modified uh, camera mount. Uh, this is the little spherical camera mount uh, that I made um, and um, I posted uh, a video about it yesterday for probably a couple of days by the time I get this video out of here um, and uh, I realised I made a little mistake in as much as uh, I didn't design it I just sort of made it uh, uh, the way I thought it was right and, um, what I find is, is the camera hits this bottom part of the frame there and I realise what I should have done is made this arm here longer so that the camera can squiggle past this lower support. So I'm going to extend the length of that arm so that's what this uh, next video uh, is really for is to let you know I, I, I didn't get something to as right as I could have. Okay, I'm back in the workshop and uh, this is the bracket that I'm going to replace. I thought I'd uh, run out of aluminium but I found uh, this piece here and um, uh, if you notice uh, the, these uh, brackets are uh, tapered uh, like the branches of a tree it makes sense to uh, uh, get thinner as you get away from the roots and um, so I've set the hacksaw blade so that the blade is at uh, 90 degrees um, and uh, that's, that's no problem I just sort of marked it up and I'm cutting it there something you may not be too familiar with is uh, putting a bit of oil on the uh, saw blade when you're cutting, well, cutting anything this is just ordinary uh, domestic 3-in-1 uh, oil um, and um, what happens is it stops the aluminium from clogging up the blade um, little bits of aluminium will adhere to a dry blade but if it's got oil on it um, it won't stick and um, it actually makes it easier to cut um, you, you, know, you could be forgiven for thinking that oil would lubricate the, the cutting surface and prevent it from cutting but it doesn't uh, in fact you can get uh, special cutting oils uh, but this is ordinary just domestic uh, I guess it's a mineral oil as I move close into the aluminium you can see there that it's uh, it's got a very rough edge and uh, I'll show you how to get rid of that rough edge uh, and introduce you to a tool that you might not be familiar with this is uh, what I'd call an ordinary file, this is a fine cut file and if you try to file aluminium with this it will clog up even if you put chalk on it or put oil on it uh, it will clog up. I'll show you the fineness. Uh, this file has 32 uh, lines of teeth uh, per inch so that's a, a fine cut file and uh, as I say, you can see aluminium will block that up. In fact, I think I've, I've used this at some stage for just touching up a bit of aluminium, and you can see it sticks in it. Once you get bits of aluminium stuck in there, it will actually scratch the, the metal that you're filing. This file is a, a dreadnought, and uh, it's a lovely file. Um, you have to get used to it. Um, uh, but this file has. 10 uh, lines uh, per inch uh, so very very coarse I'll show you a close up so you can see very very coarse and you might say well that's ridiculous but um, it's not and I'll, I'll show you the tool in use I think you can liken the um, dreadnought to uh, a tool like this this is obviously a, a plane and uh, there's only one cutting edge there um, uh, so the dreadnought has 10 per inch so you can think of the dreadnought as being like a plane rather than a file but uh, I'll, I'll show you the, the dreadnought in, uh, in operation 
So there's uh, our aluminium, so you can see it's uh, rather uh, coarse uh, where it's been cut and uh, that's the dreadnought. I'm not sure how much of this I'm getting in shot. If you go across like that it won't be very satisfactory at all because you'll be going up there. But if we go in that direction Do the whole thing, but I, again, I'll get you close up. Um, but let's go to that's a section that hasn't been filed there, so that hasn't been filed, and that's the section that has been filed. Um, so, what I'll do is I'll, I'll get it all looking like that. Um, so, it will in fact look as though it's been guillotined. And of course the the file itself doesn't clog up because the the grooves are simply so large. Nothing to stop you putting a bit of oil on that again. But anyway, I just thought I'd uh, share that with you. Uh, got nothing to do with the camera, but it's just a bit of workshop practice. You probably see the size of the shavings or the filings coming off there. You can see the uh, the size of the sort of flakes that uh, the uh, the dreadnought file brings off. Um, uh, just as I say, it's just like planing the metal, and uh, that's that's got a nice uh, a nice flat edge now. So I've uh, roughly sawn the uh, the radius on the end that I want. And now I'm going to file that again with the dreadnought. Sorry about the lighting in here, but it is so bright. I've had to close the, or half close the blinds. Um, and uh, I think I should have put my uh, my bench on the other side of the wall, for that, at least for uh, photography. But uh, um, uh, it is what it is. This is uh, a little awkward as I'm working from the, the wrong side of the bench or on the side of the vice. Um, so if you see that action there sort of rolling action. And remember this is uh, three millimeter thick aluminium. Okay that's the uh, the old bracket in the middle there and uh, that's the, the camera mount bracket over there and that's uh, that one there is my new one so I've actually made that arm there uh, two and a quarter inches longer. Okay that's uh, got everything back together so now the camera can uh, move uh, completely freely. I've still not mastered the uh, spherical mount yet as uh, this is only the second day of uh, playing with it and I've spent more time modifying it than I have using it. But uh, this is uh, a shot I took in the back garden and I've slowed it down in the um, video editing software and I think um, if you were to use the special effects in the video software packages I'm, I'm sure you could get some very interesting uh, uh, videos. Some of the points um, I need to note is uh, not getting in my own shadow and um, I also want to remove the shine from the uh, aluminium as it sometimes acts like a mirror and uh, you suddenly get a shot of light where you don't want it um, and uh, that can be a, a problem. By the way that um, 
a sound that uh, the bird song that sounded like uh, a tropical rainforest uh, bird is simply a blackbird uh, slowed down. It's, uh, I didn't know that was going to happen, but it gave a very pleasing sound effect. Um, so uh, still learning. Um, and uh, for, for those who are concerned, Brian's doing okay. He's probably munching his way through the vegetable garden right now. There's one thing that I have learned, and uh, as I've chased these bees around the garden, trying to get them into a position <laughs> where I could uh, photograph them, I will never have the patience to be a wildlife photographer. Um, I've tried all sorts of uh, little things but I think they, yeah, uh, I think uh, th they need luring. I either that, or I think people put them in the fridge for a bit to slow them down. Um, but uh, anyway, I've had a bit of fun with it. And um, uh, if you do make one of these mounts, uh, have a go. Um, I, I would love to see the results. Uh, so I'd like to think that I've encouraged somebody to do something. Um, right, there's just uh, more of the same uh, uh, running on from here, so I'll say um, thanks for all the positive feedback I've had so far, um, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.